Hey guys, it's Serious Man Toby coming at you with another guide, and today we'll be looking at PTS Naruto. Overall, PTS Naruto is a very annoying character from his block string to his very fast combos on hit and insane priority. He's very much an annoying character to fight against and a very easy character to tackle into. Anyways, let's get started with the guide as he actually does have a few tricks up his sleeve besides clones. Looking at PTS Naruto's combos on block, on block Naruto's up combo puts the guard on yellow and with a dash on red. Naruto's down and neutral combo can only be completed up to this part leaving the guard on blue and with a dash on yellow. It's much better to go for the up combo on guard, providing you can't do what I'm about to explain to you. However, PTS Naruto has a block string so you should be going for this on block as it will force your opponent to sup or risk having their guard broken where you can punish hard with an ultimate. On a hit, Naruto's up combo simply pops up on in the air for a nice follow up into his air combo. His neutral combo simply provides a strike back. And his down combo provides a nice close knockdown that you can take advantage of with a tag, bomb, or sax. And lastly, Naruto's air combo has nothing else outside of being a standard air combo. Taking a look at some of his other tools, Naruto's grab ends in a close knockdown that you can take advantage of with a tag, sack, or a bomb with the addition of a sack setup. Naruto's tilt pushes the opponent extremely far away on hit and block. If all of his hits hit, it puts the guard on yellow and should you dash him or a combo on red. It starts up fast, so it can be a good tool to get opponents off you who are comboing on your guard. And on hit, the last part where the opponent is stunned for a little bit can be taken advantage of with Leer Switch. PTS Naruto's projectiles are standard and do not provide any extra benefit. As for his Jutsu, PTS Naruto has two Jutsus, Rasengan and Demon Wind Bomb. Starting with Rasengan, as Naruto on block it puts the guard on yellow, however as a support he grinds against the guard for a while leaving it on blue, but allowing for block pressure. And on hit, lastly it can be cancelled for the cost of chakra. I just have my chakra gauge set to unlimited for the purpose of showing you this. It can be cancelled at any point on hit or in general, as you can see I'm cancelling at the beginning middle and at the end and I'm not even hitting anything which is really good in case you whip your Ross thing on your opponent tries to punish. On a hit it actually gels into a combo should you cancel it making it perfect for punishing a blocking opponent since he can then infinite block stream. Taking it a step further should you find it hard to land the Ross thing on in general for this pressure scenario you can pressure with a different character. Use them as support take advantage of the multi hits and then leader switch to Naruto and instantly cancel into a hit. Not only that, but in general shit, you can dish your opponent to respect this hit. You can even go for a tilt or a grab to surprise them. Next, his Demon Wind Bomb on guard glides really far away from the opponent on block, but can still be punished and does little to no damage on guard. On hit, you can take advantage of it by using Leader Switch and going for an ultimate. And it even causes a strike back on completion. Lastly, Naruto's ultimate is standard and provides no other benefit. ETS Naruto's Awakening is just as fun as you guys remember it. It's the same powerhouse that it's always been, and as with his regular form, he's definitely got some tricks up his sleeve. Ultimately, I'd say if you're pretty well versed with Naruto in general, this comeback is fairly possible. I'd give his awakening ultimately a 6 out of 10, but it's going to take some work. However, it's not an awakening that does not reward 
proper usage and strategic plays. Looking at his combos on block, his up and down combos leave the guard on red with a dash, so damaged to the point where the next hit of anything breaks it. His neutral combo leaves the guard on yellow and with a dash on red. On hit, Naruto's up combo provides a nice pop-up for an air combo follow-up. His neutral combo knocks the opponent away. And his down combo ends in a close knockdown. His air combo during the part where he performs a series of teleports can actually make him dodge, trade, or even just plain beat out opponents who try to sub and dash around the sequence for a punish. Looking at his guard crush, his guard crush is a long ranging fist that causes a knockback. The ending part of the guard crush can be cancelled out of to make it safer as letting the ending rock can be quite punishable. Naruto's tilt has four sequences which depends on how many times you press circle. You can stop it at the first hit or let it rock to the final hit. On block, when it's finally done, it puts it on yellow and on hit it pops the opponent in the air. However, you can only capitalize on it with leader switch as initially Naruto himself cannot move for a minute and your opponent can jump out and land by the time he recovers. In Awakening, Naruto gains Vermillion Rasengan, which acts just like his normal Rasengan, aside from the fact that it does more guard damage. As Naruto himself on block, it puts the guard on red, and as a support, it grounds against the guard, allowing for block pressure. And on a hit, it ends in a nice close knockdown, meaning it'll be much easier to continue aggression since it'll be close. And lastly, Naruto's projectiles have a wide radius and come out fast. His normal wind throw is simply good for interrupting mash components, but what's so much better about his chakra wind throw is that not only is it bigger and acts in the same fashion as his regular ones, but you can even combo off of them if done low enough. This will give you ways to work around counters and whatnot. And there you have it, there's PTS Naruto, he's a rather basic character, there really aren't too much in the, in the ways of cancels or infinites or anything extensive like that, but he's a pretty annoying character. Believe me guys, when I say this character was the bane of a lot of people's existence pre-patch because his priority was extremely absurd and they finally toned it down with the huge road to Boruto patch, normalizing him if you will. Ultimately, he's still a good character to play, and I play him from time to time because he's really fun, as he's really fast, and just a fun character to take a trip down memory lane with. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the guide. Of course, you'll want to like and share the video if you really enjoyed it, and subscribe to stay tuned for more content like this. As always, it's all appreciated. Mysterious Man Toby, signing off.